I remember feeling really overwhelmed when I was trying to decide where to go to college. I was having trouble figuring out which places to even apply to, and then of the ones that I did get into, having to weigh all the different aspects of which things were important to me, and I really didn't want to mess things up because this was the most important decision I'd ever made in my life. So these are the five things that I would tell my high school self to look for in a good computer science program, so that hopefully you can pick the college that's right for you. So one of the most important things that you should be paying attention to when you're looking at different computer science programs is their curriculums or the classes you're going to be taking. Most places are going to start you out with building a strong foundation in just learning how to code. You're going to learn the fundamentals in a language like Java or Python or C++. If you have a strong preference for a certain language, then you might want to look at what kind of languages that school likes. For example, my school, Georgia Tech, leaned heavily on Python and Java. Unfortunately, I really liked C++ and none of my courses taught that, and in hindsight, it wasn't the end of the world, but I probably would have preferred a program that focused a little bit more on C++. And especially when it comes to something like the fundamentals in the early classes, it's important to get a sense of whether a college is more focused on the theory or the implementation. As a good example of this, uh, think of something like data structures and algorithms. So anyone who's familiar with this, if you use any major language like Java or C++, you'll have a library that probably has a lot of these things predefined for you, and it's just a matter of learning how to use an array list or a vector or a linked list without actually learning how to implement them and how they work from the ground up. Now, that's very important in industry. That's primarily what you'll be doing, but it's also really valuable to understand how these things work under the covers. Uh, you could spend a lot of time learning how to implement these from scratch, which is what we did in my college program, but we spent almost no time learning how to actually use and leverage these in languages, which meant that when I would go and write about data structures in Java, I always wrote my own from scratch instead of just using the ones that are provided by the language in libraries, which is not something you should be doing. Another thing that's worth thinking about is, especially when you get to higher level courses, like your 3000, your 4000 level courses, how much you're going to be able to specialize and focus on the things in computer science that you really care about. Where I went to college, we had something known as threads, which is basically just a fancy term for specializations, and we could choose two of them out of probably seven or eight different options. So what I chose was known as devices and intelligence. Put simply, you could kind of think of this as focusing on things like AI, uh, as well as things like robotics and actually interfacing with real world devices. Those were classes and things that I was really interested in, and I had the flexibility to go and play around with those things in my courses after I got that, you know, base foundation. But for other people who didn't care about robotics or artificial intelligence, they didn't have to take all those same classes and they could focus on studying the things that they were really passionate about. Something else that I think is important to realize is not all specializations at different colleges are created equal. And there's a couple of main things you should probably look for. One of which is how many different tracks are available. Maybe there's only three or four different options you can choose. Maybe it's seven or eight. Uh, can you choose multiple tracks? Can you kind of mix and match? How much flexibility do you have to really take the courses you want to take? And then another thing is, how early do you need to commit to those specializations? Where I went to college, we had up until I think the spring of our sophomore year to lock into the track we wanted to do. And that gave you a lot of time to figure out what you were really interested in instead of committing as a freshman and then regretting it as a junior. And I think you could even change threads uh, part of the way through college if you decided you didn't like what you were doing. You really had a lot of flexibility and there were a lot of different options to really niche down into the stuff you were most interested in. You should be able to find curriculum information available online for pretty much any college you're considering. And I definitely recommend taking a look at that and seeing which courses you have to take and which different specializations are available, if any, that can kind of give you a good idea of there's a lot of really exciting courses on there that you're really excited to get to do in your later years. I know that was definitely the case for me. I couldn't wait to be a junior and a senior. Or if the degree is very one size fits all and there's a lot of basic classes in there about things you don't really care about, maybe that won't be the best program for you. Something else that's really important when you're trying to pick the right program is doing your research. Now, if you're watching this video, you're already on top of things. Uh, you've probably already done some research, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about some things that were really helpful to me back when I was in high school and some things I didn't learn about until I was in college that probably would have been really helpful to know about when I was in high school, uh, both qualitatively and quantitatively, to make sure you're making the best decision. All right, so when it comes to the more quantitative side of doing this research, there's a couple main metrics that I recommend looking at just to give you a better idea of the strength of the program and then the overall success of graduates. And one of those main things is just comparing the programs head to head using something like US News. I remember using that a lot in high school, and it can give you an idea of 
which programs are perceived as being the strongest. You definitely need to do more research than that, but that's a good starting point. Some other metrics that I really recommend looking at, but you might not be able to find for every school, some schools don't like to advertise these, is placement after graduation. Uh, specifically, what are the companies that people are working for? How much money are they making straight out of school? What percentage of the graduates are actually getting jobs or moving on to grad school or whatever it happens to be? Because this gives you a sense of the profile of an average graduate, which means if you were an average graduate at one of those schools, what would you probably be doing after you graduate? Back in high school, I remember I had a spreadsheet where I kept track of which college programs were feeders into big tech companies because uh, I was really hoping to make it into big tech. And you can kind of get an idea from looking at those salaries and which companies people are going to that if I go to school A on average, it seems like there's a greater chance that I'm gonna end up at one of those top companies like Microsoft or Google or Amazon, as opposed to school B where it seems like people are making less money out of school and aren't going to those really interesting jobs. There's a lot of other things that you can look at when it comes to the quantitative side of this research. Maybe it's the average graduation rate, the average financial aid package, or how much people are spending to go to that school, uh, how many years it takes to get the degree on average, but at this point I'm going to transition over to the qualitative side of things because some of this can actually be more insightful than any of the numbers from the first section. And probably two of my favorite resources when it came to doing qualitative research back before I even went to college, but then also once I was in college and I was trying to scout out which classes to take were looking at my school subreddit and going on to rate my professor. So especially if the college you're looking at is decently big, there's a pretty good chance that they have a subreddit, and Georgia Tech fortunately had a pretty active one. This is helpful when you're a current student, and that's mostly how I used it, but I didn't realize before I went to college that that's a great resource for finding out other questions that people have asked, and just to see how people vent, what they complain about, which things they really like, which things they don't like, and just to get an idea of the student sentiment of do people like this school or do they regret going there and they actively hate their own school? For Rate My Professor, this is probably going to be more helpful once you're actually a student, but it can still definitely help to get an idea of which professors are going to be teaching the courses that I'm going to have to take and what people think of them. If all the professors are rated really badly in the computer science department and people are always complaining that they're really hard, they're really unfair, they're not good at teaching the material, then even if everything looks great on paper, that's giving you some information that seems to imply that the professors at the school maybe aren't quite up to snuff. So make sure you do your research, both qualitative and quantitative. It should give you a lot more peace of mind in terms of making sure you're going to a strong program that people actually like and think is a good use of time and money, and also gives you an idea of how people are doing once they graduate from the program. Are they going to the companies that you want to work for and earning the salaries that you want to make when you're coming out of school? And I think overall, you'll just feel a lot better committing to a school once you've really done that research. The next thing that's really important is getting a better feel for the culture at that school and in that program. There isn't one right answer because different people want different things, but there are definitely a few things that you should be looking for and a few things that you should be looking out for. So a really good thing to look for is whether a school has a lot of other like-minded computer science students there. Uh, this was something that I got really lucky with when I went to Georgia Tech on my floor of like 36 kids. Almost half of us were studying computer science. Compared to my high school where there were only a couple of us who cared at all about computer science, it was a complete culture shock, but in a good way where I got to be around all these other people who were studying the same stuff as me and passionate about the same stuff as me. But probably even more important than whether or not you have a lot of computer science students at your school is whether or not the program is cutthroat or whether it's collaborative. And the reason why this is so important is if you're out of school that's really collaborative, you can learn a ton by studying with and working together with your classmates. If you're into it, maybe you can even do a startup with some of them or something like that. But if you're at a school that's really competitive, and I mean like in the negative, cutthroat, sabotaging other people kind of way, you're really going to be in it for yourself. No one's going to want to help you anytime you struggle with something, and if anyone has the opportunity to do something that's going to give them a leg up but is going to push you down, they are going to do it. I was very lucky that the college I went to is not like that at all. It was a very collaborative school where people got along and they helped each other. And in hindsight, I'm very fortunate that I ended up at a school like that because there are other schools that do not have that nice of a culture. So I would definitely say, make sure you take a look at the culture. This is something that you can maybe get a feel for by doing that research, looking on a subreddit and finding out if people really are just in it for themselves and kind of hate each other and just stab each other in the back on projects and stuff like that or if people are really looking out for each other and trying to help each other grow. And overall, I think that's just going to be a lot better for your college experience, and you're gonna learn more and succeed more if you're at a more collaborative school. 
All right, another thing that I think is really important that's probably a little bit underrated is what life is like outside the classroom in that program. You know, you can have a really strong curriculum, you can learn a ton, have great professors, but there's more to your experience, specifically for computer science, that happens when you're not actively sitting in a classroom a couple times per week. More concretely, this might be stuff like clubs and research. I didn't do any research when I was in college, but I did participate in several clubs, and I think my college had over 30 computer science clubs, and that was a strong indication that outside the classroom, people are joining clubs, they're doing stuff in the evenings, and even if a curriculum isn't covering something, if people are passionate enough about it, they're gonna go off and do it on their own. For example, as a sophomore, I did a club called RoboJackets on the IGVC team. Basically, in a nutshell, we built a big autonomous robot that could navigate around on an obstacle course, and I'd never done anything with autonomous driving up until that point, but I learned so much in just a few months of working in that club. Things that I never would have learned even in my junior and senior classes as a sophomore, just by joining that club and interacting with those kids, I got to learn so much, and if your school has a lot of clubs and research like that, you're going to be able to learn so much more than you'll learn in the classroom, as long as you're willing to dedicate your evenings and your weekends to going out and trying stuff. Beyond just clubs and research though, another really big thing to look out for is career-related opportunities at your college. Uh, specifically at my college, we had a career fair for everyone, which is great, but we also had a dedicated career fair that was like four days long, and we also had another one in the spring just for computer science majors, and this was completely free, and that was such a great opportunity to try to get a job and to talk to employers and to get your resume out there that not all colleges have. And beyond all the stuff with the career fairs, my school also had companies coming to campus basically every day and just hanging out in a certain room in our College of Computing building. It basically meant that every day was like a mini career fair. You could just go and give them your resume, you could talk to them when you're done, you could go get a slice of pizza, which was really nice. And this was an awesome opportunity. It's how I got my second internship with Lockheed Martin, which I mentioned in another video recently. I showed up, I waited in line for 10 minutes, I gave the recruiter my resume, we walked through it. Next thing you know, I had an interview, and I got an internship just from doing that. So in summary, don't just be looking at the curriculum of a program, even if there are great professors and great classes. There's a lot more to college than that, what you actually do in the classroom. It's doing those clubs and doing the research and making sure that you're being set up for success so that you can get internships and a job because ultimately that's a lot of the reason why you're at college in the first place. So the last thing that I need to talk about is the rest of the school. I know this video is mostly about choosing a computer science program, but the reality is that program is not going to be completely isolated from everything else that's going on at that college. Because you're going to take classes that aren't part of your computer science major, and you're going to spend a lot of time walking around the campus, and you're going to be sleeping in the dorms, and you're going to be eating in the dining halls and all that stuff. It's not just about whether or not you like the computer science program, it's about whether you see yourself living on that campus and going to that school for the next four years. And back when I was trying to decide where I wanted to go to college, I remember being really excited about visiting certain places that on paper seemed great and I was just really thinking was gonna be the place for me, and then walking around the campus and just not feeling like things clicked and not feeling like I belonged there. And I had the complete opposite experience when I went to Georgia Tech. Everything was great on paper. I visited and I felt at home pretty much immediately, and I could see myself being a happy Georgia Tech student and not just someone who was spending time on the Georgia Tech campus trying to get this degree because it was gonna do things for me once I graduated and hating everything else about the school. So even if a computer science program seems perfect to you and you love everything about it, don't forget about the other aspects of the school because first and foremost, you are going to be a student at that college as a whole, not just a computer science student. And if you really hate aspects of that school, that's really important to think about before you commit to spending four, five, six years of your life there. All right, if you enjoyed that video, you might also wanna check out these videos where I talk about how to make the most of your freshman year of college. Anyways, that's it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.